a lot of you ask me about this. There they are. There's the La Scala AL5s. Yes, I still have them. Past Labs XP12. There's a Kinky Studios EXM1. Um, so yeah, I still have all of this stuff. Um, I don't get over here and listen to this system very often. Sometimes I'll hook up my turntable in here with some tubes and uh, I just enjoy the sound of that uh, immensely. It's kind of dark in here right now, but I have little speakers. I have uh, affordable turntables as Fluence I reviewed a while back. I love this turntable for the money. More past labs, phono stages, uh, XP10 preamp. <laughs> outside. I don't mind the rain or the gloom, um, but uh, I've been sitting in here listening to my system and I want to share some changes and some updates and some coming soon reviews that I'll have for you guys. I'm still, of course, these are with me for life. I've said that many times and I mean it. These are Fleetwood DeVille SQs, the most um, for my tastes, which is warm, fluid, expansive, Big sound stage, holographic, human touch, but also enough oomph and kick in the mid area for rock. These things, I've never heard anything like them. I love these speakers in my space. Um, but they do sound different depending on the kind of amp you run with it, the kind of DAC you run with it, etc. Um, but these are absolutely gorgeous. And I will have a comparison soon against the standard DeVille's. Also, I'm listening still to my Carry SLP05 preamp. Gorgeous, gorgeous preamp. Uh, I reviewed it here not so long ago. Right now, I have a full set of the Pope 6SN7 tubes. New old stock. Hard to find. Rare. Expensive. Um, but they are definitely, definitely an amazing 6SN7 tube. And it takes up the, no the level of this preamp quite a few notches. Of course, I'm still running the Pass Lab 60.8 uh, Class A amplifiers, uh, mono blocks, 60 pure Class A watts per side. They run hot, they're heavy. I just turned them off so they're clicking. And uh, all of that though, it, it's worth it for the sound they bring, that warm, glorious mid-range and bass and airy, softer treble. Uh, it's the sound I love. So this mates very well with these. Um, moving on, I have the Dana Fripps Terminator Plus in for review. Now you've seen my reviews possibly of the Pontus 2 as well as the Terminator 2. This is the flagship DAC from Dana Fripps, right? The flagship DAC right there. You can see the Dana Fripps logo on top. All metal, beautiful, beautiful look to it. Um, of the three Dana Fripps DACs, I've heard the Pontus 2, the Terminator 2, and now the Terminator Plus. Hands down, without question, in my system, this is the best sounding. It adds a little more life and top end uh, to the Terminator 2, uh, where the Terminator 2 is very smooth, silky, expansive. It was a little laid back in my system. This is... Um, Still smooth and silky, but a little more energy in the top, a, a, more transparent. I'll have a review of this uh, shortly, coming up soon. Still using the Lumen U1 Mini streamer. Uh, it's been a workhorse, two grand. Uh, actually, when I bought it, I think I paid 1600 for it. And it was a definite step up from the Blue Sound Node 2i. Um, but considering the rest of my system, this may be the last thing I eventually upgrade, uh, possibly to the Lumen U1, the non-mini version with the external power supply and all of that. But I'm in no hurry. This has been a tremendous, tremendous streamer. Um, yeah, I have no complaints. Down here, I move the power supply of the carry into the cabinet. This is the power supply for the SLP05. Very, very cool looking, very, very solid design. It has a 5AR4 tube rectifier in here. Uh, I also have a new old stock 
uh, in here. Now down here I have a DAC from Lab 12. This is the DAC 1 reference. I've had this in for a few weeks, courtesy of the Music Room. Uh, they sell all kinds of gear, new and used. Uh, if I'm looking for a used piece of hi-fi, I go to the Music Room. But I've been evaluating this against my reference DAC, which is right here, the Weiss 501. Now, the Weiss 501 is better in my system than the Lab 12, but the Lab 12, I think, is a $3,000 or $3,500 DAC. This is a $9,000 DAC. Uh, this has a little bit of a leaner, more top-end sound uh, over the Weiss and the Dana Frips, but it's a very, very lovely DAC when it's on. These VU meters glow yellow, and you can, you know, it, it, it's v, they're VU meters, so they look cool. Everybody loves meters, right? Very simple DAC here. Uh, it's nothing too fancy, but it's a solid piece made in Greece and uh, Lab 12. The Weiss 501, I still adore. It's my reference, uh, but I'm right now auditioning the Dana Frips uh, against the Terminator Plus against the Weiss, and there's things I like about the uh, Dana Frips, and there's things I like about the Weiss. Now up here is a piece that was so hard for me to spend the money on. I almost shed a tear, but <laughs> I tried. This is a direct stream power plant 20. A lot of controversy around these things, but I'm here to tell you that this has been, this has been an amazing addition to my system. I would not be without this in my system, but it all depends on your power quality, right? I had higher distortion. My voltage was off. I had some DC on the line and this fixes everything. It even managed to fix a couple of pieces that had some buzzing from the transformer. And that's because they were buzzing because I must have some DC on the line. Once I hooked this up, the buzzing went away. I also have a dead silent background. It regulates the voltage to 120. I think coming in, I have like 128. Um, so it regulates the voltage um, and it just adds a holographic soundstage to the room. If I unplug everything from this and go into a wall or even the AudioQuest uh, Niagara uh, 1200, it's the sound flattens now. It doesn't sound as organic and rich. Uh, this is just tremendous. It's big, 105 pounds. <laughs> it's, it's heavy, uh, but it powers everything. I have the amps plugged into it because they sound way better plugged into this than the wall. It's crazy. Usually you hear people say amps sound better into the wall, but again, that depends on the quality of your power. Everything I have is plugged into the power plant, and uh, I, I can't imagine the system without it now that it's been in. Now, of course I can, I've lived without it and I loved the sound, but that's the problem with high-end audio. Once you get a piece in and you hear it and it's a big improvement to what you've had before, it's hard to go back being without it, right? So PS Audio gives a 30-day uh, tryout in your home and with so much controversy over these, I, I had to try one and I wouldn't be without. This is an amazing piece. I did try the um, starter power plant. Uh, is it? No, I forgot the number. The five? Um, I think it's the five. And it was not a good experience for me. The fans clicked and made a loud noise. The fans never shut off. They were audible from my seat. And this has no fans, so it's dead silent. Uh, I, this is... The 15 and the 20 are the ones I recommend, but this, my friends, is gorgeous. So all in all, this system right here provides sound that is warm. Not warm as in like hiding details. It's very detailed, very holographic, very airy. Magic all over the place. Um, but it leans warm. That means it has that mid-bass punch for rock. If I want to listen to rock like ZZ Top, if I want to listen to Judas Priest, if I want to listen to any hard rock or metal, this system kicks butt. At the same time, if I want to listen to some jazz, right? Um, throw on some classic jazz or new jazz vocals like, um, you know, uh, Billie Holiday, Diana Krall, uh, Melody Gardot. They just are in the room present, three-dimensional. I could not ask for more. And that's, that's one lucky thing I have here, being able to review gear and try out gear because... I can try it in my room and I, 
I can find the right synergy. And that's what Hi-Fi is really all about, finding the right synergy for your pieces of gear. Now, I have never heard these speakers sound bad, but I've heard them sound different. They can sound um, leaner. They can sound fatter. They can sound more airy. They can sound more subdued. It depends on how you're powering them, your preamp, your source, your DAC. Everything matters, even the cables. So synergy is the key. Uh, I get a lot of emails from people saying, well, my system just sounds lean and I, I can't get any plumpness uh, in the music. What's going on? Well, in that case, it's either the room, the placement, because placement makes a big, big difference, or it's your speakers it's themselves, because a lot of speakers are made to sound like that, unfortunately. Um, you know, I guess there's people who like that lean mid-bass, detailed, fast kind of sound. It was big in the 90s in hi-fi. Um, but I've always loved that feeling of listening to music that's warm, inviting, and uh, kind of, you know, I always talk about that, but it touches your heart and soul. Uh, lean, fast speakers don't touch my heart and soul. <laughs> they excite my brain. So this is my system as it is today. Um, these have been the mainstay. These have been the mainstay. I have the previous versions here. I'll do that comparison soon. I've been listening and listening. There are differences, not only in looks and parts, but in sound. So stay tuned for that. I'll have a review of the Dana Fripps Terminator Plus as soon as I can get to it. Just wanted to give you guys that update. So uh, we're actually having a big family gathering here this month, about 20, 25 people. So we've been putting in the work to get things looking good. But I thank you guys, all of you, for watching this. Thumbs up and subscribe. Hey, bud. I'm going to go in, get to work. Thank you.